Welcome back. Today's project involves a mould that I've had for a little while and I keep taking it out and looking at it and thinking what can I do with that? Finally I had a look at it the other day because I was thinking of new ideas to put on the channel and for some reason fish came into my mind. Now I've done the koi fish on a tray but these are different stickers. So that's what I did and this was fun to do. I didn't know if it would work when I started out making this but I thought well you won't know unless you try. So that's what I did. <laughs> With this mould it's got lots of nooks and crannies especially up where the fingertips are. So have a good old rummage around in there. Despite all my you know attention to the resin trying to get it in all the nooks and crannies I did still get bubbles but I didn't really mind no, I thought it was sort of you know fitted in with the whole theme so yeah I did a lot of heat gun and the reason for that was to make the resin warm so that it's thinner and hopefully gets in all those little difficult spaces Yeah, this mould takes an amazing 16 fluid ounces and as you can see, you're going to need every drop. <laughs> A moulding day! So even though, you know, this this is a deep mold, but I didn't use deep pour resin. I used my normal Let's Resin Resin one to one ratio. And it worked. <laughs> yep, another challenge for my poor feeble old hands. <laughs> You think this would be easy to get off, but yeah, you can see I struggled. Yeah, I was really pleased when I took off the mould, eventually, that the details in this are really nice. You can see the fingernails, and it's, I, I don't know, it was just, I was surprised at the detail in it. There are my bubbles, but they're only little tiny, the micro bubbles. I don't care. <laughs> and you can see these hands are kind of life-sized when you compare them with the size of my hands.
Now, I know that koi are freshwater fish, at least I believe that's true, <laughs> but here I've got a sort of beachy sea theme going on. I'm putting in some shells, I'm going to be putting in some little beads, which kind of smacks of the ocean, but hey, it's fantasy. <laughs> So, I only realised when I watched this video back for content <laughs> that I didn't actually cure that last little bit of UV resin. I just went straight ahead and dumped my Let's Resin resin, you know, the normal epoxy resin on top. Um, but I don't think there was any detriment there. <laughs> and set it aside to cure. And now the real fun begins. I've done koi fish before. I did it on a tray with different stickers, but the same kind of greenery, you know, the same kind of lily pads and what have you. I liked these stickers because they're 3D. You're sort of looking down on top of them and they're very effective. The only thing that was annoying was when I got the stickers and I peeled one off just to see what they looked like. It had this white edging around the outside. So I had to get my scissors out and my crafting glasses <laughs> cut all the white edging off, which was a little bit annoying, but you, you do what you gotta do. In between the layers, when I put on the resin, I make up two ounces of resin every time. You don't need that much really, but I didn't want to faff about with half an ounce of part A and half an ounce of part B to make up one ounce, which is probably all you really need. So every layer of resin will be made of two ounces of resin. So next go the plants. And as I said before, these are the identical same plants that I used when I did my koi fish tray. These stickers are easier to use because they just come straight off the piece of plastic and go straight on the project. So they are not annoying. If you've watched my videos before, you know that when I have stickers, I don't usually peel off the backs. Why? Hmm. This is a good example because it's fiddly and frustrating. And I had to take off the backing of each one of these. Don't ask me why the brain didn't kick in before, but I suddenly thought to myself, why am I torturing myself like this? I could use the cello tape method, which it works. And I wish I hadn't, you know, spent so much time 
fiddling around trying to get the back off the other fish and just use this method to begin with. But there you go, brain isn't always in gear. Yeah, so that made the whole process of taking the fiddly little bit of plastic off the back of these fish stickers. I just use the cotton bud just to give them a little press down. And another layer of resin. This is another layer of plants, and this is the final layer. The effect I was hoping to get, because this is a very small space to work in, hello fishy, um, was to get that effect of depth, you know, the different layers of fish swimming around under the plants, between the plants. So I put my plant stickers where I thought I wanted them to be and uh, I just cut around them on the sheet of plastic and pop them where I thought I needed to have them and then trying to keep them in the same position put them back on the project and again with the cotton bud now because I'm going to be putting on another layer of resin to cover up the plants I just put on, I thought I should make a resin bridge. So I got the old UV resin out and just built up the end where the wrists are. If you should attempt this project, note to self, make the UV resin bridge deeper. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to put too much UV resin on, although because it's transparent, you wouldn't really see it. But I was trying not to make a huge, great, bumpy bridge. But I should have made it deeper. So just carry on, putting on little bits of resin, building up the bridge. using my fabulous new toy, which is very efficient. And here we go with the last layer of resin. You can see I did prop it up on sticks because I knew that resin would run out of the wrist end. Yes, just like that. But I was also aware of not having the resin run out at the finger end as well. So this was tricky. I actually stayed with this project for about half an hour. I mean, I was doing other things as well. And just kept taking 
um, a Q-tip and taking out the resin that ran over the edge. And here is the final result. <laughs>